So today is March 4th and I decided to go out in the wetlands and see what's going on with the skunk cabbage and wouldn't you know it, the bees are in it, getting pollen and flying back to the apiary. So let's go into the apiary and see how well they survived winter hive by hive. So today we're walking the bee yard and we're going to see how many colonies made it through winter. This is going to be a nice hot day, 70 degrees, by the way. And we're going to see how many colonies made it and how well they did. We're starting off in the lower field with colony number 33 right here. It's a double nuke, five frames over five frames, insulated cover, no top feeder. We just depended on what was left for the bees, which was top five frames of covered honey. So capped honey. And here we go. We see that they're bringing in pollen. Good news. Today we have maple trees and uh, the bees are on those. The bees are also in the wetlands. We have another colony here, number 17. We have a feeder shim on top. We have an insulated inner cover. We have a full deep made by Hoover. You can see how that finish is holding up. It's kind of going away. And then at the bottom here, we've got a brood box made by Premier. And we all know now that this is the one that's got the propolis on the inside. We're going to inspect those later on this year. I would say these bees are busy. Look at all the pollen going in. That's hive number 17. Let's keep going. <laughs> Come right over here. I might have forgot to put a number on this hive. That's odd. Oh no, we didn't. Here we go. Hive number 36. Let's take a look at that. Feeder shim on top. Medium, full of honey. That's how they go through winter. Single deep. This is 10 frames. We reduce the entrance, of course. And we look at the activity here. Lots of pollen going in. They are brood building. I think this early spring that uh, Paxitani Phil predicted is going to work out. I think it is definitely in the favor of the bees. Let's keep checking. Colony number 19. It has a metal entrance uh, reducer on it. That's three eighths of an inch by just about four inches in width. And all we had on this one, insulated cover, feeder shim, insulated inner cover, medium super that was jammed with honey going into winter single deep 10 frame and that worked fantastic now we're on to one of the pleasant surprises hive number 35 this is a lysen nucleus hive i thought they were done for and look on a nice warm day like today what's going on well Lots of pollen going in. Big surprise. Now this is the colony I almost lost and that's because we saw no activity at the entrance. That's because there were a bunch of dead bees piled up against it. And we have a top feeder on this. We weren't putting feed in it, but I figured out how to pull one of the feeder restrictors off on the end. And we did put a half a pack of Hive Alive fondant on hive number 35. That's our surprise package right next door sad to see it we've got a dead colony of bees it was a single five frame nuke late season swarm had a feeder shim on it insulated cover on that just didn't cut it through winter so there's a loss and we go right next door we're into the apame hives here this is number 41 insulated hive no big surprise there and these are deeps by the way this is the seven frame nucleus hive that they have lots of great activity here all the entrances are closed and that's consistent throughout all of my hives but these are all deep frames above seven and seven and then of course the entrance that you have total control over you can even divide these by the way and create multiple nukes if you wanted to seven frames doing great what we look for is to see the pollen coming in no robbing going on low stress they're all over the maple trees they're in the wetlands they're in the skunk cabbage and who knows wherever else they're getting pollen the news is good and here we are with another double nuke 
hive number 42 and the bees are doing great here too another surprise package double deep so that's five over five no feet or shim so whatever they saved in the fall is what they have and these were the colonies that i uh, was experimenting with late season swarm collection no idea how they were going to make it actually my expectations were low but uh, happy to see it hive number 42 made it just fine Sipping on over here to another double nuke. This is hive number 10. And they're coming and going, pollen just like all the others. No top feeder shim at all. Insulated cover. This is polystyrene. It's just the insulation board you get at Home Depot or wherever, two inches thick. And they had five frames of capped honey on this top box. And of course, this is the brood box. And we left these entrances restricted exactly as they are right here. So, count hive number 10 among the surviving colonies. Now, of course, we jump to hive number 50. Whose colony is this? This is Quinn's colony. The ones that he knew chose him to be raised by him last fall. And here they are doing fantastic. He's going to show up today after school, and we're going to walk through everything and look it over. Let's look at how Quinn's colony was configured for winter. This is a single deep, 10 frame. It was a swarm capture insulated inner cover feeder shim he did put hive alive fondant on it and then we have the b smart designs outer cover telescoping cover on that and if this survived winter which it did he gets to move these into his next beehive so that's going to be interesting and as i said he's going to show up today and we're going to talk bees and see what our next plan is for him and now we jump right over to the long langstroth hive no feed on this hive at all this year. This is, of course, a horizontal Langstroth, all deep throughout the length of it. It is five feet long. Zip up here, look at the entrance. I did put this entrance reducer on it. Now this is the hive guard or hive gate entrance that normally would use with those entrances. But I found out since it's three eighths of an inch in height, this plate works perfect as a mouse guard and also reduces your entrance. Once again, let's get a close look. These bees are doing fantastic. Jumping on over to hive number 24. And this is a Layens hive. No feed, nothing else. All we did, standard Layens frames. They are using the full length of the hive. We haven't inspected them yet this spring, but it's easy to see that even though we tend to ignore these guys, they're doing fantastic on their own. They're bringing in pollen and uh, resources, of course. As I mentioned, the maples might be providing some nectar right now. And this is a great day and a uh, good result here with the Lance Hives. This is insulated with sheep's wool and uh, has the standard Lance frames. And this hive was purchased from Dr. Leo's HorizontalBees.com. And now we're at hive number 29 here, which is another Lands hive. Same setup as the other one. In fact, I had to set this one up because the previous Lands hive became overly populated. And so I just had to expand and install another one. Here we are. They were ignored through winter. No additional feed, no supplemental care. They are just making it on their own. Great vote for the Lands hive design. Although I have to admit, we had a mild winter, so I don't know if it was much of a test. We do have insulation in this hive. I closed off all the upper vents. We do have double bubble insulation on that. So it's insulated all the way around and we only use one entrance, even though we have the option to use three. And this will stay this way all summer long. And this is the third year with this hive. And we jump over here to a nucleus hive, hive number three. Same configuration that we've seen in the other nukes. It is a double, five over five, no feeder shim, insulated cover, just the two inch rigid foam board that is duct tape wrapping around it. Of course, I have the audible alarm here that keeps bears away and it only operates at night. Five over five, great configuration and has proven to be a pretty good standard if you're gonna hive uh, swarms or if you want resource hives and things like that. Another success story. Let's keep going. Now, of course, we have to make our way over to the Way to Be Academy building. 
observation hives 100% success story again these are all small observation hives we don't uh, manipulate them at all they don't have feed on this time of year Some, but uh, they do have the option for sugar syrup if they were looking a little sad or a little under energized we would do that no sugar syrup right now so everything they're doing is on their own and the new observation hive this year let's go over here the ivory bee hive i've given you a little spot checks on this one through the winter safe to say the ivory bee hive definitely works in cold climates and they are still this counts as an observation hive although kind of uh, different as far as observation hives go it's modeled after a barrel and uh, which is an ancient design as far as the space goes but the ivory bee folks have uh, done something different with the material and looked wall to wall plenty my concern with these bees is they're just not going to use their resources up people wanted to know if that was insulated enough to get them through winter absolutely you have the option to have a back entrance here that has remained closed just because i decided to keep the only entrance facing south you could have a back entrance and uh, i just think this population of bees is going to build up and we're going to have a swarm machine here i don't know what else to do with them in the springtime we are going to harvest the honey so when we know we're out of danger here and everything is good We'll of course find out how difficult it is to pull those frames and uh, get the honey extracted. We'll see how that goes in an upcoming video. But for right now, just proof of life, that's it. And just for kicks, we might as well look inside the Observation Hive building, the Way to Be Academy, which is of course just by Bee Shed. These are my hot pockets. This is all the insulation they have. And this is double bubble. I just made little pillowcases out of it. And look what's going on in here as far as temperature goes. We're at 80 degrees. Now this is an unheated space and we're only heating based on the sunlight that comes streaming through these upper windows. And of course we have double bubble as insulation all over the ceiling in here. And that does a great job of retaining heat and also deflecting super hot summer days. So, so it's a great day for the observation hive. I'm sure we'll do updated videos showing the interior of that, but right now we have other things to do. Let's keep counting bees. Now we'll check into the hives in the upper bee yard here and see how they survived. Starting off right at the end of the run. Insulated cover, feeder shim, insulated inner cover, hive visor, medium super full of honey wall to wall, and a deep premier propolis or propola interior surfaced hive body and it's a dead out that's it we've got some bees checking them out but i think these are just scouts that are going to later try to rob it but we're going to close that up because we're going to prevent robbing but number four did not make it i have number six another success story pollen coming in resources coming in how's it configured We've got that uh, plywood base that I won't be reusing. We've got a slatted rack on it. We've got a deep 10 frame box for the brood. And then above that, the medium honey super, insulated inner cover, feeder shim, insulated outer cover. And that's all she wrote for that one. This is hive number seven, repeat. Insulated outer cover, feeder shim, hive live fondant was on this hive. We have to replace this box, it's in poor shape and the bees are creeping through. Medium super that was full of capped honey, 10 frame, full deep 10 frame, and then a slatted rack, solid bottom board, reduced entrance, and what do we have? Lots of pollen coming in, healthy colony of bees for number seven. This is hive number eight. Insulated outer cover, feeder shim, hive alive fondant, insulated inner cover, and of course we have a medium super full of honey going into winter. Hive visor, deep bottom box, brood box, slatted rack, 
This is, of course, a flow hive design. And what do we have going on here? We do have screened entrances on it. And the screened entrances reduce it to keep mice out, but also allow full ventilation just for comparison. The colony is doing really well. And uh, just look at all the pollen going in. Different colors too, that's great because I don't know where they're getting it. I'm just happy to see it and I think we're all set. Now we're going to do hive number 22 and 23 together. These are my nucleus resource hives, stacks of three, five over five over five, insulated caps, no feeder shims. They went into winter with just their top boxes packed with honey, wall to wall, so that's five frames, deeps, capped honey. Middle box was mixed capped honey and some brood and some resources like pollen. Bottom boxes were all for brood. And uh, as we can see, did they make it or didn't they? Yep, more good news. Number 23, lots of pollen coming in. They're brooding up. Number 22, also pollen coming in and brooding up. These are going to be fantastic resource hives. If we need pollen brood, if we need queen replacements, we're going to be pulling them from these colonies. And you might be wondering, where is that cluster right now? Well, they didn't even finish their top super of honey. They're right between the two boxes right now, if we took a thermal shot of this. So we won't be pulling these apart. We're just going to see how they go. No fondant, no emergency feed, just that top box of honey that they stored themselves. These are resource nucleus hives, three high. So that's five over five over five, 15 deep Langstroth frames per hive. Now we're on to hive number 30, which is a full size 10 frame Apame hive. Insulated, this is the third winter by the way. And they have double bubble on the top. The bees closed up those top vents themselves with propolis wherever they could get to it. So we have 10 frames deep right here. They did have Hive Alive fondant packs on top as emergency resources. They used about a third of it. Come all the way down. Brood box at the bottom. Single entrance. You tell me how they're doing. Let's look at the entrance here. See how much pollen's going in. What a fantastic day. They really are brooding up. So we're just going to skip right over to hive number 40 right next door, which is one of the Apame nucleus hives, seven frames. So we've got uh, the hive top. Again, let's repeat. We have hive alive fondant up here in the feed boxes at the top. So these feeders at the top are uh, good for liquid or solid material, just depending on how you set it up for candy or syrup. 10 frames, 6 frames capped honey going into winter, and of course 6 frame brood box at the bottom, and let's look at the traffic going in through the entrance there. Again, pollen. You have total control over these entrances, you can open one side or the other. They have built in mouse guards, and I would say that the Apame colonies are proving themselves to be terrific cold weather hives. Hive number 16, a flow hive. It had a gap in the top where the feeder shim is. And so I just wrapped it with this cloth going into winter. They do have Hive Alive fondant on top in that feeder shim. They have a medium super on top. Hive visor, standard deep 10 frame brood box. We have the standard um, flow hive entrance, entrance reducer. All flow hives, the way they come, are already reduced to a 3 8 inch high entrance, so there's no need for mouse guards on these. I did put wooden shims on there to reduce the entrance. They have trays that are removable. They have adjustable feet at the bottom so you can level your hive. And let's see how they're doing. I think you already know that they are doing fantastic and we have lots of pollen coming in, just like the others. And this is hive number 18 an Apame hybrid. So this is Apame boxes, but it also just has a B-Smart Designs insulated inner cover sitting on top of it. We have a feeder shim that was fortified with Hive Alive fondant. Sounds like a sad uh, story that we're repeating over and over. Insulated outer cover. This is a 10 frame medium super. And we have, of course, 10 frame deep box sitting on a wooden slatted rack and a standard wooden 
bottom. So we had an insert here to reduce the entrance. This face is north, that's why it's so dark, and uh, also get some mold on the north side of it. I prefer to have all the colonies facing south or southeast because that's what does best. But just for comparison's sake, we are leaving several colonies that face east and north instead of south and southeast. As you can see here, another great story. Lots of pollen going in, three eighths inch entrance. I have a lot of wind kicking in right now, so I hope it's not messing up my narration, but uh, strong colony. And onto a 10 frame Apame hive number 28, medium super. Now in the future, I'm only gonna be using deep boxes for the Apame, so I'm not gonna be doing mediums anymore. They did seal up and propolize their top. They had Hive Alive fondant cut in half and put in those feeders in the candy setting. This is a deep brood box down below. And this is again, is hive number 28. A very reduced entrance here. I did that on purpose because I thought they were gonna have troubles. And as we can see here also, it's a north facing hive. See the black mold on it? The south facing hives did not have that problem at all. So let's just take a closer look at the entrance. Built in mouse guard, lots of pollen going in. They're brooding up. We're going to be in Swarm City here before you know it. Now we're on to hive number 14, which is a flow hive. And I had written them off. I thought they weren't making it. Insulated outer cover, feeder shim, insulated inner cover, hive alive fondant, deep eight frame box, hive visor, deep uh, eight frame box again for the brood box. And surprise, surprise. They made it through winter. So this is one of those feel good moments when you have a colony that you thought wasn't going to make it at all. And here they are again, it's north facing. So we've got some dark mold issues kind of on the face of it, not terrible. And we do have a dead bee right here, which is good news by the way, not that it's dead, but if you see them cleaning house, that's a healthy colony. There's no robbing going on. And let's move on to the next hive. Hive number 20, did not expect them to make it. Insulated cap, no feeder box. Top super that's deep, that's five frames. You don't see a lot of activity here, so they're not actually doing really well. But the good news is that we've got them coming and going. The problem is I'm blocking the entrance because I'm videoing from right in front of it. There is some spottiness that they've been defecating on the face of the hive. But see here, just in time, we've got somebody bringing in pollen. So that's a bonus. If I get out of the way, I think we're gonna see traffic pick up. We're gonna count them among the survivors because they are brooding up. Let's just jump straight over to hive number 13. This has been dirty since last year. So this is not from this year's activity. This is a, looks like a flow hive bottom box maybe. It's got a slatted rack, solid bottom board, three eighths inch by three inch entrance reducer. We've got a medium honey super that was left on for them to winter with. Keep in mind, we had a really mild winter. Insulated inner cover from Be Smart Designs, feeder shim, hive alive fondant on top. They used about a third of the fondant. Now this is interesting. I'm seeing them cleaning house here. These are chunks of propolis that are being dragged out. That's interesting. So they're cleaning that up, who knows why. But another colony that looks like it's gonna be very promising for spring. Now this hive is right next door to the previous one. I don't even know the number, so I'm gonna have to consult my records. And I don't know the number because my plate that marks it is covering my tag. These are valve tags, by the way. They're brass, they're pre-numbered. We have lots of pollen coming in. Let's get close to that. The hive stands, by the way, we have different hive stands on different hives around here. These are the license stands. I get them from Better Bee. You can get them from any source you want, but these are the most adjustable and adaptable stands I've ever had. You just put two by fours through them. They're a little expensive. They were 125 a pair. I think they've jumped to 135 a pair now. Standard configuration, two boxes, medium super full of honey going into winter, deep brood box, slatted rack, and then a solid bottom board, entrance reduced, no mouse activity. Moving on. 
Another standard length Stroth hive in terrible condition. I just threw a swarm in here. Did not think they were going to make it. Insulated inner cover. Medium super in terrible shape. I'm sorry, that's not medium. That's a deep. What am I saying? Anyway, deep super. High visor. Deep brood box at the bottom. And... Uh, it's in terrible shape. These bees, I wrote them off. I thought they were dead. We're not going to make it for sure just because they were low performing bees in the fall, but now we've got pollen coming in. That's how we know they're not being robbed. They're bringing in provisions and they're dragging out their dead. Another positive sign. If they've got the time to do housekeeping, way to go. And here we are at hive number nine. Listen how quiet things are over here. Insulated outer cover, feeder shim insulated inner cover or yeah insulated inner cover high visor single box this is an eight frame because this is a honey flow or flow hive honey flow is the website if you want to look them up anyway this is hive number nine thought they'd be dead i don't mean to be disappointed my problem is i have too many bees so we'll be doing something with them maybe in the spring we'll start combining and making larger colonies i don't need more resource hives i have everything i need here it's i guess a good thing when you expect colonies to be dead and they make it and prove you wrong so i guess i'm happy to be wrong here and now we're just going to jump behind them really quick hive number 15 look at the entrance there let's check this out so hive number 15 good for them they are bringing in pollen. Now, I don't know if you remember this colony, but uh, this is the only one when we had the big windstorm coming through. You'll notice that they're strapped down to their electrical conduit, which, by the way, so this hive stand is electrical steel conduit, and these are just iron T-posts that we wire them to. I drive the T-posts into the ground about 33 inches. And then these little nubs that stick out, hold it, and we put wire on it. And so that's what you do when you're in a rush and you want to make something simple and cheap. This one fell over, so it was leaning against these other T-posts right here. And uh, so we have five frames, five frames, five frames. And this did have a feeder shim on it. So I've got an inner cover there that I had to make because it wouldn't fit that particular size. And then we have a feeder shim on top. Look at the insulation we have, none. So all this has is a migratory cover. And if you look closely, what's the gasket material? Double bubble, that's it. So it worked through winter. Double bubble underneath the migratory cover, which offers very little protection. And then just of course, that's over the feeder shim inner cover and of course a triple box happy to see them make it that's why i'm saying if your bees fall over in winter time they don't come apart you just stand them right back up put a nice solid shipping strap on them and you just might have good news in spring and that's the tour 34 colonies of bees made it through winter we have two losses we went into winter with 36 and this is where we're at today. So I think, as I said before, we're going to be in trouble. Too many bees. Too much going on. The supervisor's coming later. I'm sure he's going to want to look into a hive as soon as he gets home from school. So I want to thank you for watching. I hope that you're having good fortune with your bees this year. Just like bees. Early spring. Let's see what the rest of the year brings us. So I'm Frederick Dunn, and this is The Way to Be.